right, so I use one of these Great Plains uh, slot machines. I really like it a lot. Uh, the only problem with it is, is you got to keep those blades replaced, and that's a little expensive. But uh, anyway, it keeps me from slitting my wrist with the razor blade. Uh, what I do is I take a, a pin, ballpoint pin, and I push it into this as a, as a guide. It actually helps me guide with the, uh, the uh, slot machine. So I push that in there. That's my little guideline. And when I cut the slot, I don't cut it straight. I cut it down at an angle. So you can see, hopefully, what kind of angle this is going in at. It's, uh, it's going straight down into that. About a 45. And that's going to push out a little bit on the back side, but I get more girth here. I get more wood if I do it that way. Same way with over here. I don't even poke out the back end because I actually go through here and I go straight into the wood on this side. And that way you, you make sure that you have plenty of balsa around your hinges. Now look at this. This is just nice as can be. Of course if you had a, you know, more along both the ends, this would match up a little better. But that here, here's how much throw you can have on this thing. You have unlimited throw this way, and you have that much throw that way. So uh, you really get tons of throw if you do it this way, guys. Uh, I really like doing it this way. Uh, you guys decide how you want to do it, and uh, no one's no one's right, no one's wrong. Um, but uh, I just really like doing it this way. So uh, looks nice from the top when it's all matched up, and. Uh, and I think aerodynamically it, it works out nice. So there you go, guys. Um, if you have any more questions, let me know. This, this is going to be a toy for the kids now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, I wanted to show you guys uh, one more thing here. And uh, that is how you attach your control horn. Uh, that's kind of a dirty one there, but there we go. That's a little cleaner. So um, anyway, if you put your control horn, like if you build another plate that went straight back to here to here, here's your hinge line way up here. And that is not ideal because you want that thing to connect at the hinge line. And as you can see, it's way back yonder. So here's the fix that I think works out pretty good. You take a file, you sit this upside down flat, and you take the file and you file a flat spot. And I'm going to go along here and do this for quite a bit, actually. So I'm going just pretty well flat against the, t the uh, working surface here. Alright, so you can see what I get there. Now what I'll do on top of that is I'll add some plywood. You don't have to add, you know, one eighth, but something like, uh, oh, one thirty second would be fine. So you add the plywood in there and then you attach it here. Now look what happens there. You get that hinge line. Now when you rotate it, you know, the way it's supposed to be, you could see how that is pretty close to where it's supposed to be. And that is about perfect. Um, so you want to get that as close to a rib as possible. Not on top of the rib, but as close to a rib as possible so you have some reinforcement there. Add the plywood there and attach that there. And that's all that needs to be done. With that, it's going to have plenty of strength. So like I said, add uh, 132 ply here. Put that there. I think on my first one I added another rib here on, uh, on both sides. You could do that if you want to make you feel better. But uh, that's it. So really simple. Uh, that way it's, you know, you can see the difference. You're going to go from there to there. And that's where you want it at. Because you want that to be the pivot point right there. Okay? Hope that helps.